your thoughts are far above my thoughts, and I will listen for your voice. I was um, in home building, residential. I was the superintendent for a, um, a pretty large home building, you know? and um, was just kind of, you know, was, was doing a pretty good job for the company. At least I thought I was. And um, I've seen a couple of people getting laid off around me, but thought that, um, you know, the work that I was doing was important enough that the company would probably keep me. And um, you know, I had my 401. Um, plan. I had um, our insurance and everything was fine until the day came that um, you know I, I did. I got laid off. I had I had a feeling I was pregnant, so I had I was trying to deny the fact that I was pregnant. I was even denying it to Marcus. And then um, <laughs> that's when I Elisa told me she thought she was pregnant. You know. We're just barely getting it. our daughters fed. Now another mouth. Um, and like I said, I didn't have a job in sight. I didn't even have any good um, prospects lined up just because the economy was so bad. So it was the first time in a long time that I really panicked. Um, really felt kind of helpless. And uh, But then we came to uh, the center to, uh, to confirm, first of all, that she was pregnant. And even while we were here, you know, I said, well, whether it's confirmed or not, you know, I was getting more and more convinced of this is what we have to do. You know, uh, a lot of times you gotta do things you don't like to do. Uh, we found out, in fact, we are. It came back positive. And uh, we were, at that point we were, Contemplating what we had to, you know, what we had to do if we were able to afford or not, and um, I think uh, in our in in our minds we were leaning towards doing a an abortion. Like I said, inside and in, in our hearts, you know, we were we were hurting real bad. We were, but we really didn't feel like we had any other resources anywhere to turn to. You know? But. Um, <laughs> I can remember that day like it was yesterday, and I always will, because we met some wonderful people here, and um, they just started giving us some options to think about. We, we did an ultrasound. I came in and I, and I watched the screen, and, and uh, I was watching them move around. And <laughs> um, I guess all that thought about it being an it changed. You know, it, uh, 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 it doesn't move. You know, uh, uh, it doesn't have a life. I was, I was watching his body move. I was watching his heart pump. You know, and my whole mindset changed after that. It was okay. Maybe um, financially, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, or it's going to be harder. But this, this is a person. You know. No, we don't know the sex yet. No, no, I don't know any of his dimensions or anything. But um, he or she is a is alive. Is a person. Um, this is Quincy Scott. He was born on October twenty first, two thousand eight. Um, he was seven pounds fifteen ounces. Healthy, healthy baby boy. He's perfect. He's a perfect angel. Uh, I look at him and I, I, I can imagine just a few, you know, just a few months ago we were contemplating having an abortion. I just, I just thank God. I thank the Women's Resource Center for getting us through that tough time. Um, I just, I love you guys so much. I, I, I th I'm so thankful that you got us through that tough time. Oh, we are, we are so in love with each other and so in love with our kids. We, we, we love our life right now. And the voice of the Lord is asking, whom shall I send? Help me to discern your will. Help me 
you to send your 